Welcome to the first episode of a slightly different type of review. Everything you've come to expect is still here, from detailed shots, our thoughts based on genuine hands-on experience, and of course watch up suggestions, but here we'll look at some brands you might not have heard too much about before. So to kick things off, let's take a look at the Marlowe Mora Sands. So who are Marlowe watches? Well their story is a familiar one for many small brands currently enjoying the increased ability to bring an idea to reality. The small brand simply focuses on making things as they should be made for their intended purpose. Combine this with the refreshingly unique designs, great inspiration and a devil for the details and the output can only be positive. Based in the north of Scotland, Marlowe was founded by Oliver and Gordon who started their journey with just a manual wind watch. From there they continued to build their range and reputation until three years ago when the idea to create their first diving watch was born. Being based somewhere like North Scotland with such natural beauty around every corner, it was only right that their first diving watch took inspiration from this, especially their great bodies of water. The Mora Sands is one of five models in the Mora family. These watches all sit in 40mm cases that come in at 12.4mm thick with a lug to lug distance of 48mm. Those are pretty respectable dimensions to boast about, but the boasting doesn't stop there. The finishes on these cases all vary depending on the model you go for, with bead blasting, bronze and gun metal all featuring. The latter is what we see on the Mora Sands to complement the chunky design of the case. This is the first telltale sign that this is a watch that wants to be used for its intended purpose. Personally I think this version of the Mora Sands is a welcome change up from the normality of simple steel that is now becoming more and more common. Next up is the bezel, and it's a chunky one. It's fair to say you can't miss it, and it really has a big impact on the watch as a whole. Marla has decided to continue the gunmetal finish to the bezel. You won't get any ceramic bezels or aluminium inserts here, and that's on purpose. This comes back to the main aim with the Mora, to create a diver watch that can actually be used as a dive watch. The bezel is clicky, easy to operate, and suits the watch perfectly. 310 on the dial might not mean that much to you initially, however this refers to the water resistance rating. And why 310 meters? Well that's paying homage to Loch Mora, the loch this watch is named after, which is 310 meters deep. For me, the higher the water resistance ratings go, the less I find myself having an interest in the feature, so the fact this piece offers a screw down crown is far more appealing to me than an extra 100 meters of water resistance. Flipping the watch over, we also get another subtle nod to the inspiration for this watch, in the form of a mysterious creature that is thought to have lived in the lock. A cool touch that really helps to paint the picture of the Mora. Behind that case back and at the heart of the watch is the Miyota 9039. This is the dateless version of the 9015, which also has a lower hand stack for a thinner profile. This is a reliable choice for many brands, so it makes sense as to why we see it here in the Marlow and I'm all for no date as well. On certain watches not having a date is a must, so props to Marlow for sticking to the brief here and not being tempted to throw a movement in with a date complication inside to increase its mass appeal. Going back to the front of the watch now, and we have potentially one of the most eye-catching, detailed and enticing aspects of the watch, the dial. For a small footprint, there is a lot going on here. The large commanding hands on this piece really control the dial and effectively manage to keep the rest of the piece's strong identity. The dial and its texture has to be one of my personal favourite aspects of the watch. It's a light sprinkling of grain, which is just enough to add that appealing level of pop to the dial. The finishing touch on the dial is a sunburst blue on the second strap. This has a lovely underlying sea green tinge to it, which when combined with the teardrop shaped indices, really pushes home the core design aspects. For all you lovers of loom out there, the Marlowe performs strongly here, with the minute hand featuring a green glow rather than the bright blue. This watch was a pleasant surprise in person. As a company who purely operates online, we're fully aware of the pitfalls of only selling products through a screen. The main one being the lack of hands-on time people can have with products before they put their money down. However, once a product does arrive, the enjoyment is only heightened when it turns out to be better than your initial expectations. This was certainly the case with the Marlowe. 
If you're looking for a watch that you can wear and truly not have to worry about what you're putting it through, you're looking at it right here. Its reliability, legibility and unique appearance only work to increase its appeal. The diving strap the watch comes fitted on is a big bulky silicon rubber. This makes sense on the watch, but for me the choice of silicon and overall thickness really do let the watch down. So speaking of straps, let's have a look at a few now. So as we just mentioned, the silicon strap doesn't really do too much to enhance the watch. Fortunately, we have a 20mm lug width to play with here, so there's plenty of options for straps. Today, however, we wanted to offer a couple of options that will allow you to still use the watch as it was intended for, and one option if you're looking for something a little bit more casual. It's worth noting all of these options taper by 2mm, so you'll still be able to use the standard gunmetal Marlow buckle from the original strap to avoid any clashes of metal finishes. First up is a strap that makes total sense on the Mora. The quick release sailcloth is an option that is as attractive when fitted to the watch as it is practical and reliable. The grey stitching picks up on the dial colour and the quick release spring bars ensure the strap changes can be made nice and easily. Next up is the Tropic Rubber. Another combo that we just can't ignore on the Marlow. In my opinion, this is what the Mora should have been fitted to as standard. It has many adjustments throughout the strap as a byproduct of its design. The strap is by no means thin at 4mm at the top of the strap, but it's a beautifully balanced option for the Mora Sands. So we've spoken a lot about how these straps build on the Mora's design to be practical and tough, but what if you're looking for something a little bit more comfortable? Well, the old Chester would be our suggestion here. And as soon as it's fitted, the bulkiness of the watch seems to be reduced massively. So, the age-old question, is the Marlow Mora Sands worth the price tag? Well, the price tag is £449. For this, you get a uniquely designed mechanical watch using a great movement with a real purposeful feel to it. If you're someone who likes supporting the little guy, who does things for the right passionate reasons and sees real value in a surprisingly unique watch considering the saturated market it belongs in, the Mora Sands might be the one for you. In terms of the watch, it's a piece of kit I'd feel confident relying on as long as I don't find myself spending all day looking at the dial. We'd like to thank Marlow Watch Company for sending the Mora Sands on loan for this review. If you'd like to learn more, be sure to head over to their website. We'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.